What's up? I'm Vin, and today I want to take a look at the 2019 AP Calc BC free response question number two. So we have this question here. The region S is bounded by this polar curve with the equation R of theta equals this expression here. And the limits are going from zero to square root pi. And the first thing we want to do for this question is find the area of region S. Now, for this part, just knowing the formula for the area under a polar curve, in general, it's going to be one half the integral of r of theta squared d theta and what we have to know to find this accurately is we have to know the limits of integration which are in terms of the angle theta but they told us the boundary of this curve is from theta equals zero which would be this angle here to theta equals square root pi which would be somewhere around here containing this curve and if we use those limits the rest is just us typing everything into the calculator and what we have to do to type this in, we're going to switch over to polar mode. So I'm going to press mode and I'm going to switch down here from function to polar. And that way, when I go to the y equals, everything is in r equals form. And our equation is 3 times the square root of theta. I hit the right arrow to get out of that. And then we've got sine of theta squared. So there's our equation. And it's saved in the r1 equals, so now we could just go ahead and type everything freely. The integral is 1 half, which we could just write 0.5. And we've got math 9 for the integral from 0 to square root pi. So we press second x squared for the radical, and then second with this up arrow here for the pi. And it's the function r squared, so I'm going to press the vars button here for the shortcut. I go to the right, and I'm not going to go to function, I'm going to go down here to polar number 3. And r1 is where we typed r of theta. And this function is being squared. And then I just have to type in d theta at the end. We press enter. And this gives us the value for the area of s, which if we round to the nearest thousandths place, this is going to be 3.534 square units. So this is our answer to part a. Now for part b, the language could be a little bit tricky. But they want us to find the average distance from the origin to a point on the polar curve. Now that sounds very confusing, but just think very carefully here. The distance from the origin to a point is called the radius. So if you think about it, what this is really asking part B is to find the average function value of R of theta because this is a function that tells us the radius at any point in region S. So depending on what theta is, it tells us how far away we are from the origin. So if we want to find the average value of r of theta from 0 to square root pi, then we're going to be doing 1 over square root pi minus 0. And we've got the integral from 0 to square root pi. And we've got r of theta d theta. So for this question, you have to know the average value of f of x over a, b formula. This needs to be automatic by the time you get to the AP test. So it's an, it's an application of this question, but you just have to recognize that the function they're referring to here is the, formula, is the function for the radius, which is r of theta. So we just have to type this in now. And we'll do alpha y equals enter to type in a fraction. And I've got 1 over the square root of pi minus 0 is just square root pi. So I get this. And now my integral, I'm pressing math 9. I'm going from 0 to square root pi. And then the rest of this here, I just type in R1 again. And that's VARS, right arrow, polar is number 3, and then Y1. You could just type it in every single time. But I find just typing it in once in the Y equals saves you a lot of time because you're probably going to have to use that function more than once. So we just press Enter here. And now we're just going to round our answer to the nearest. We'll go out to the 10 thousandths place so that it rounds a little bit nicer. But it's going to be one57 9, 9, and the next number is a 3, so we'll stop here at 9. But this is the average distance from the origin to a point on the curve in region S. In question part C, we're told that there's a line going through the origin, and it has positive slope M. And this line cuts region S into two sections with equal area. And our goal here is to come up with an equation involving one or more or more integrals where the solution gives you the value of M, the slope of this line. Well, a few things that we need to know is that if it's going through the origin, the equation is just y equals mx, where m represents the slope of this line. 
And you could have certain formulas memorized for this question, but if you want to know the concept behind what is the value of m, just think about any line going through the origin with slope m. If I take some random point on the line, call it x, y, and I look at a few different components, I look at this component here, x, and the vertical component, y, and I call this angle here, theta, then I could say that the slope, m, is equal to the rise over the run, which is just going to be y over x if it's a line through the origin. But I could also say that tangent theta is equal to the ratio of the opposite side to the adjacent side, and that's also equal to y over x, which then allows me to say that m is equal to tangent theta. But one thing we have to be very careful of here is that when we're setting up an integral for a polar equation, just know the limits have to be in terms of theta. So we need to come up with an equation for theta, and in this case, the theta we're looking for is tangent inverse of m. So this is where this equation is, is going to come from. We're just going to grab it from here. So now we're going to use this idea. This tells us that the angle of this line is theta equals tangent inverse of m. But if you think about what we were told in the beginning of this question is that the region starts at an angle of theta equals zero radians and it ends at an angle of theta equals square root pi radians. So if all we have to do is set up an equation here, just know that the area, which is always one half the integral of r squared, in this case we're calling it r of theta squared, that the area of this first part of region S from theta equals zero to, remember, the angle is equal to tangent inverse of m. This is exactly half of the entire area of region S. So there's a few ways we could go through with this. If I want to say here that this area is exactly half of the entire region, what I could write inside this part here is I could write the integral expression for the area of the entire region S. But just think about it carefully. We already found this in part A. We said the area of region S was 3.534 square units. So this equation here suffices. The area from 0 to tangent inverse of m of this region here is exactly half of the entire area. And just know if I want, there's a few different ways I could do this. I could also make my lower limit tangent inverse of m and my upper limit square root of pi because this area on the left is exactly half of the entire area as well. So for this last part here, this part of the question is definitely the most involved. We're told that for some k value greater than zero, a of k is the area of the portion of region S that also lies inside the circle r equals k cosine theta and we want to find the limit as k goes to infinity of a of k. So to gain some conceptual insight here into the question, just know that we should be investigating this a little bit. So if we were to test out r equals 1 cosine theta, r equals 2 cosine theta, and we just keep doing this all the way down to r equals k cosine theta for positive values of k, we could type this in, and I'm going to turn off the original function here because we don't actually need to know what the original function looks like because they gave us the original function. And if I were to type in, we have r equals 1 cosine theta. We have r equals 2 cosine theta. And we just graph this normally here. I'll zoom in a little bit because these are small circles. So you could see when I increase the radius, or I'm sorry, when I increase the coefficient of theta, I went from 1 to 2 theta, the circle is opening up wider. So what you would want to imagine here is, let's say I made it something really big, like uh, r equals, let's say, 40 cosine theta. You could start to see here that this circle is just becoming more and more vertical. It's getting closer and closer to the y-axis. So now think about the idea as k goes to infinity, that means I would have something like r equals 100 million cosine theta. But as k goes to infinity, the circle that we get is looking more and more vertical. It's extending so far up before it begins its turn that this thing is hugging the y-axis in both directions. So now just imagine here the circle is going to engulf this part of region S that's lying in quadrant 1. So that's the idea that you need for part D, is that as k goes to infinity, these circles get bigger and bigger, and it engulfs the part of S that's lying in quadrant one. So now you just have to think about 
how would I describe the region S that's inside this circle in quadrant one? And just know here that this angle here is theta equals zero, and this angle going vertically along the y-axis is theta equals pi over two. So then here, what is the limit as k goes to infinity of a of k? This is just equal to, remember, it's always one half. If I'm talking about the area, it's one half the integral of r squared. But now the limits are once again going from zero to pi over two because it's all of region s that's in quadrant one that's being engulfed by this circle. So then all we have to do here is go back to the main screen. And remember, r1 was our r of theta from the question. And what we're going to have is 1 half. We press math 9. We're going from 0 to pi over 2 now. So those are our limits. And we have vars, right arrow, and we're going to polar. And it was r1 that we were interested in. And it's being squared because we're finding area. And now we just press enter here. And if we round our answer to the nearest thousandths place, then the area that answers this question is going to be 3.324 square units. Okay, well, this is going to conclude this AP question. If you found this video to be helpful, please like and subscribe. It really helps me grow the channel. And if you've got any requests, just leave the topics you want me to cover in the comments section below. And thanks for watching.